when you see things in general um, throughout mathematics and they're hard, right? They're hard. You should start thinking, is there something symmetrical about this situation? Okay, so case, sorry, approach number two is arguing from symmetry. Okay. Now, um, one of the overarching principles that we mentioned in approach one by cases is um, sometimes a problem seems insurmountable because it's just so large. It's like if you have 50 letters, right, and you're raging, you're like, my brain just hurts thinking about 50, I can't draw 50 letters, right? Uh, in the same way over here with cases, you're like, oh man, there's nine cases. Now that's not impossible to do. It's not impossible, but it's very time consuming. You don't have to do all nine though, right? So a general principle here is establish a pattern. Establish a pattern. And if you can see logically why it should just go down one every time, then go ahead and take advantage of that pattern. Okay? Strategy number two, which hopefully you remember from year seven and eight problem solving, is if your problem is too large, right? Think about a simpler problem, think about a simpler problem, and see if you can borrow a pattern from here that can go into your pattern which has more spots in it. Okay? So I want you to notice, thinking back to the original question and the condition you're given, the letters D and M are the important letters to us, right? And the rest of them, not that important, right? So what I'm going to do is just think about those letters and think about if there were less other letters to worry about and if I can sort of take a pattern from here and take it over, right? So what I'm going to do is I've actually drawn up on your piece of paper, right? I've drawn up a pair of um, sets of boxes. I've drawn six because I happen to know, and you can verify this very easily with me, that there are exactly six ways, exactly six ways, that D can be before N or to the left of N if you've got four letters to choose from. Okay? So let's think about this, for example. If I fix D in position one, right? Give me a place, just one, where N can be. Next to it. It can be in position two. That's fine. There's one of the ways. Okay? Sticking with D being in position one, it's not the only place N can go. It can go over into position three, or it can go over into position four. Right? Now, do you remember I said to you at the beginning, we were looking at two unit probability, and I said, if it's a small situation, just list the darn things out. Okay, just list them. That's not, don't, don't think less of listing things out. When you list things out, if you do it systematically, you will see patterns. Okay? With D in position one, are there any other spots that N can be? Answer, no. So therefore, I've got to shift um, the letter D over here. Okay. So now you can see where this is going, right? Where can N be? Either in position three or in position four. Let's draw those. There. Or there. And now you can see where the last one is. Right? It's in the last one. Okay. Now these are all of the ways that N can be to the right of D. Okay? But you'll notice I've given you six extra boxes on the right hand side, right? Because these are not all the ways that D and N can be positioned, full stop. These are only the ones that meet our conditions. Okay? What would it mean? What's the converse or the complement? Of whether of, of the condition we're looking for. What's the opposite? Yeah, if you take all of these guys and reverse them, right, and reverse them, so, and this is what you can fill into your second set of boxes, if you put N and then D, N and then D, N and then and then D, right, what you'll get is an exact one to one correspondence between the ones that meet the condition and the ones that break the condition. Do you see that? So what you've got now, what you've got is you've got six over here, and then you've got six over here, okay? Now, I happen to know, and I wonder if you can work out why, I happen to know that once you've got these six, and you've got these six, there are at least two ways to argue, I've got all the ways. That's it. That's an exhaustive list, okay? Anyone want to give me a suggestion as to um, how I know that these 12, they're it? I've done first column, right? Uh, N is to the right of D. You've got your second column, N is to the left of D, okay? And I'm saying this is it. There are no more ways to place M or D in anywhere, right? How do I know? What do you reckon? I might be wrong, but um, could, could it be something to do with the, the way that you can uh, fit the other two letters that are not D and N into the final boxes? Okay, so we can think about what's left, 
Okay, we can't think about what's left. It's like, well, they have to occupy in two different spots. So therefore, if you have a look at, if you try and list them out, you'll just not be able to come up with more available spots. That's one way of thinking about it. Another simpler way, though, is that n can be to the right of d, n can be to the left of d. If you're not to the right or to the left, where else could you possibly be? <laughs> well, could n and d be on the same spot? Okay. Well, not if you're making a word, right? So therefore, I've exhausted all the options. I've exhausted all the options. Okay. Now, there's one more way I can think about this, which guarantees why it's 12. Why it's 12. 12 happens to be 4p2. Okay, you can go ahead and you can verify it, right? But why should 4p2 be the number of ways that I can do this? Hmm. What do you reckon it is? You have four spots and you have to pick two locations. Well, let's go. So, there are four. Now, now I'm shifting now. Um, now I want you to imagine. Okay, I've got these two letters in my hand and I've got four places where I can position them. And I have to pick two of them. Does the order matter? For the 12, it does, because D could be first or N could be first, right? So therefore, I'm now thinking about, rather than like, oh, which letter goes where, I'm thinking about letters and spots. These are spots that I'm picking from. There are four of them. And um, the order matters, so that's why I've done 4P2. 4P2 is 12, so I'm done. This is all of them, okay? So now I have a way, a reason to argue, right, that this over here, this is not the only way to come up with 45,360, right? Another way is to say your total ways, 12, you just have to halve them, right? Exactly half of them will meet the condition you want, right? So I'm going to write my answer very differently. The total ways, right, is half of the ways without restriction, which you already know. Do you see that? So this is actually 9 factorial on 2 factorial 2 factorial, that's that 90,000 number, and that number gets divided by 2. And that lands you on 45,360. Okay? So arguing from symmetry, that's a nice way to go. Left or right, left or right, you've only got two choices. If you ever see this left or right problem, this is one of the tools, one of the principles you can use. Okay?